and welcome to the Scar Night Magazine vodcast. This month we're at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich for the Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards 2010. In this episode of the vodcast we're going to take a sneak peek behind the scenes here at the exhibition and also find out who has won the coveted title. The winner of this year's Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition is... There were four main categories in this year's Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. These were Earth and Space, for photos that include landscape, people and other earthly things. It was won by Tom Lowe with his image entitled Blazing Bristlecomb. The Our Solar System category was for pictures of our Sun and its family of planets, moons, asteroids and comets. Anthony I. Amatis won this category with his stunning picture of the totally eclipsed Sun. The Deep Space category was for photos of anything beyond our solar system, like nebulae and galaxies. It was won by Rogelio Bernal Andreo with his incredible wide-field image of Orion. The last main category was the Young Astronomy Photographer of the Year Award, for entrants under 16 years old. It was won by Drew Varvin Paranjapi with his photo of an annual eclipse. But all eyes were on who would win the coveted overall Astronomy Photographer of the Year Award. It went to Tom Lowe for his stunning, blazing bristlecone image. I asked the guest compare for the awards, Dallas Campbell, what he thought of the winning image. I mean, firstly, you just look at it and visually it's stunning. He was camping when he took this photograph and it's one of those things that when you, if you, if you go out camping and you lie in a field and you look at the night sky, like that's the place where you, re where you really kind of get that sense of wonder and for me it really gets that. Also. I believe accidentally, because I was wondering how he took that picture, because obviously there's quite a lot of light on the tree there, and it was purely by accident, he'd left his camping light on and he took the picture and he didn't realise that tree would be beautifully exposed, but it just came out perfectly. So you get this beautiful balance between, you know, the tree, which almost looks like kind of roots going up into space, and then, and then the kind of, the, the, what appears to be the whole universe behind it. It just, it's just a fantastic picture, it says it all. It's, it's the you know the reason you know we are in awe of the night sky is summed up in that in that picture. It's great. At the awards ceremony, I also caught up with Laurent Jolicoeur, one of the runners-up in the Young Astronomy Photographer category. I asked him how he had taken his image. So I was in the car uh, on my way to New York with my family for a three-day vacation, and uh, I looked out the window and uh, I saw this beautiful solar hill. So my mother's camera was right beside me and I took it out, put it in manual mode, and I uh, took this picture. Also at the award ceremony was Daniel Mortimer, whose full moon mosaic was highly commended in the Young Astronomy Photographer category. Well, Daniel, congratulations on your highly commended image. Tell us a little bit about how you actually took the picture. Well, I took it because it's a simple, simple manual mount, no electronics. So I put the moon at one side of the image and simply let it drift across and then cropped out in Registack to get the frames, which then made the mosaic, which made the final image. I entered it because I thought, you might as well enter see where you come. And I just kept getting higher and higher at the end. So I thought, when is this going to end? And here I am. Nick Smith's image of Jupiter was the runner-up in the Our Solar System category. I asked him how it felt to get an image in the exhibition. Uh, it feels fantastic. I mean, um, uh, when you look at the standard of some of the other in images uh, submitted by uh, the various guys around the world, people like Anthony in Greece and also um, uh, Thierry uh, Legault in France, who's a big hero of mine, you know, it's, it's great to get a, a couple of images placed in this competition. What do you think of the quality of the other images in, for instance, the deep space category? Well, uh, I was here last year and this year they were way, way better. And also I should say the overall winner was absolutely fantastic. I mean, what an image, a fantastic composition. It just shows you don't need to have a, you know, a, a setup costing thousands of pounds to um, create a really fantastic image. The judges also awarded two special prizes. The People in Space Award was for photos that include people in a creative and original way. It was won by Stephen Christensen with his image entitled Photon Worshippers. The second special prize was for the best newcomer, for someone who has taken up astrophotography in the last year and who has not entered the competition before. It was won by Ken McIntosh with his excellent picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Thanks very much uh, Rog team, Sky Knight team for actually introducing this category this year because I think seeing some of the winners of the other categories, I'm going to struggle a lot next year. <laughs> I caught up with Ken at the awards evening to ask him how it felt to win. I'm gobsmacked, I've kind of just got over the shock now, so um, I think i um, really delighted and I think the best newcomer category was really made for me because I've seen 
the images in the other categories are just jaw-dropping and uh, they definitely set a benchmark for my efforts next year and uh, I think it could be a struggle. How did you get into astronomy in the first place? Um, I've been interested in astronomy from quite a young age, um, always been interested, don't know why, it's just you know the interest in the universe, how things work. I went on to do a degree in physics at Leeds um, where I just had to take the astronomy option there, excellent course. Sadly, I didn't get the grades to do a PhD, and uh, my career then changed into um, the realms of IT, where I've been working for about the last 20 years. Um, during that time, obviously forging a career, uh, I now work in the city, uh, I'm married, I've got a kid. Astronomy took a complete back seat, and it only came back to the fore again um, when I was cruising around Flickr about a year ago, and I was seeing some of the images done by the amateurs on there with really quite inexpensive equipment. And you know, with the kinds of cameras that are taken on, on holiday, you can use to do this kind of stuff. Though I've got to get back into this and quick. So I think you know that's what spurred me back into it. Um, the fact that it had become, or well, the photography side had become so much more accessible, um, and that's how it started. So really, it's quite a, a rekindling in the last year or so, and uh, here I am. Throughout the evening, I caught up with some of the guests at the awards to ask them about their favourite images. I've seen lots of pictures of M42 and the horse head, and I've taken lots of pictures of it myself. Um, but what's really fantastic about this image is the fact that the two are connected together. And you've got such a wide um, kaleidoscope of colours in there, sort of all blending together. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's an incredible level of dust in the surrounding regions. How difficult is it to actually capture that detail? Incredibly difficult. I mean, that's really faint stuff if you take a, a wide field shot of that region you probably wouldn't even see that unless you uh, you were really going going very very deep so it's, it's an astonishing photograph absolutely incredible and that stuff that dust you're talking about is really low level stuff as well so when you do capture it you no normally get it and it looks quite noisy it's right on the, the very edge of visibility even in a, in a long exposure image so they've got it beautifully smooth there it's absolutely incredible photograph I think the image that captured me most of all was the Jupiter image and it had that little black blemish on it from the, the impact in 2009 and what I remember or what I thought most vividly about it was I remember the, the Shoemaker-Levy 9 impacts in 94 and we were having to use the Hubble Space Telescope to get images like that and now you know guys highly talented guys but just guys can do this from their back garden and I thought that's just extraordinary that the way both technology and just just human talent moves on. I think my favourite has actually got to be the detailed full moon I mean you get these, these images which are wonderful deep space things but you still cannot beat I don't think looking at the moon it's so close it just means that you can see so much detail in it and for a, for a teenager to take that photo I think it shows immense I really loved the one where, where the, the fire in the forest, um, the smoke turns into the Milky Way. I thought that was a really beautiful composition, so that, that, was a, that was a good one. But they were all very, very imaginative, and I think all the judges were very impressed with those. Well, that's it for this episode. Look out for the next very special issue of Scar Night magazine, available on UK newsstands on the 19th of October. Mm -hmm.